Let me thank you for agreeing to this interview. This is our 75th anniversary, and we believe it's important to record the history of the party, how the party was formed, the events that led to the formation of the party. In 1938, you would have been 21, and you were one of the persons selected to be on the original committee to establish the party. Can you tell us how you were selected and how you got involved? In 1938, Jamaica was passing through extremely serious times. There were strikes and rebellions and all sorts of things that were not good for the country. When I say not good, uh, I mean we could have done without them. So. I was a junior master at Michael College, where I worked between the practicing school and the college. And one day, while I was sitting, I saw a gentleman in an immaculate white suit, O.T. Fairclough, come and ask me for J.J. Mills, who was one of the outstanding leaders in the country in those days, he said he wanted to see Mr. Mills. It turned out that what he wanted was to get Mr. Mills to let him have two persons from the Jamaica Union of Teachers. Isn't incidentally, the Jamaica Union of Teachers was by far the most organized union in the country at that time. So we went and saw Mr. Mills, and Mr. Mills used his influence to get myself and a lady named Gertrude Richards to represent the JUT at a meeting that O.T. Fairclough had called to come in the future. So Mr. Mills suggested to him that I be one of them. I was a young fellow, very brash, and eager for things to happen. M Mills had very successfully let us understand what was happening in the social context in Jamaica at that time. So all, th all persons of merit wanted changes to take place. So I was selected with Gertrude Richards and we were asked to attend a meeting. So when we got there, we also met with other people, including Norman Washington Manley. Manley himself, earlier on in 1937, had seen that there was need for certain changes in the social structure, and had got the, uh, the, the then banana companies to give assess, and they were able to get a new scheme known as Jamaica Welfare. So, Norman Manley used to say he was not interested in politics up to then. But he attended them when they had a meeting. We had a meeting at Silver Sipper Club. And you had groups from all over Jamaica. Fear Club had done an extremely good job getting people of marriage. As a matter of fact, when I look back now, it was almost elitist. The groups. the groups, because they were people of intellectual merit and also people who held positions of trust in the country. You know, uh, unfortunately, and this is a fact, the mayor also invited members of the then House of Representatives, but they did not attend. Oh. They did not attend. But we had some very important person, and some from some of the parishes like Manchester, 
and also from different groups like Jamaica Agricultural Society and various various groups that they had around the country. And we met and after some discussion we decided to form a committee. A committee of 21 was formed. And there again, I don't know why, but they asked me to serve on that committee of 21. And you, you would have been a representative of the JMT. JMT Union of Teachers, which, as I said to you, was the most formidable union at that time, formed in, in 1897 or sometime like that. And um, the, from that time, the Jamaica Union of Teachers was fighting for change and so on. So we met there, and out of that 21, they selected six people to draft the constitution. I don't know if I can remember all the names. But you were one of the six. I was one of the six. Yes, and you can, you can get that. You know. And we met people like C. Wright, Tanguti, Fairclough, H. P. Jacobs, C. G. Walker, Ken Hill, myself. So by far, you would have been the youngest. I, by far, by far, I was the youngest person. Yes, and um, I, but I was anxious to learn. I had been taught well by Mills about the economic situation, the, the, the cane fields and the factories and so on, and how people live, the, how the churches work, the churches played a very important part. And so I had, among the people there, I was one of those who had some knowledge and uh, I was able to make a contribution. So we were able to form to a constitution. When we took back the constitution to the executive then, the, the 21. Oh, so the 22 would have represented the executive at the time? Yes, yes, yes. Um, they didn't accept it because it was too uh, anglicized. And they wanted to really want to change. So the central spa. Eventually they accepted. And um, Norman Manley was used his great skill in analyzing what we produce. And therefore, that was the start of the People's National Party. And we decided to have a special conference later down in the year. We were invited Sir Stafford Cripps. Sir Stafford was a Fabian socialist and that is why they felt because we invited him we were they didn't say we were forming a socialist party, they said we were forming a communist party. They accused us from then and um, we had difficulty, as I said in the book, uh, to make people understand that what we were really interested in is the upward social mobility of the people of Jamaica. At that time, too many people lived in wapen buttons and tattoos and mud huts and so on. And um, we wanted that to change. We were very anxious for the people to get some of the fertile land. And as a matter of fact, at one stage we were saying nobody should own more than five acres. But, you know, we didn't accept that. But we, we, the anxiety was that we, the people should be able to plant the economic trees and fruits and so on 
that would change the economy of Jamaica. Because we felt from then that unless you change the economy, you couldn't change the capacity of the people 